Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Hypernode Developer Preview Podcast. Uh, we're back today with a uh, new uh, video about uh, something uh, different. Uh, today we're going to dive into uh, Brancher. And we talked about Brancher before in uh, episode one, where we showed how we can use Brancher uh, for our development documentation. Uh, but today we're going to actually dive into how to uh, set up Brancher for a Magento installation. Most of our users uh, run Magento too. And uh, yeah, we, we came up with a uh, sample shop uh, to display a working uh, example of how you could use Brancher with your Magento shop. So if you don't know, Hypernode Brancher is a uh, Hypernode feature where you can copy a production server um, and then just have a new server with new, new IP address, but all the data on it as you would expect. Uh, and people can use this for their uh, CI, CD, acceptance, testing. Uh, it's just very convenient to be able to clone a server like this. So, okay, okay, so uh, Timon has a uh, Magento 2 sample shop here, um, and we're going to use that to show how you could set up a uh, brancher uh, for your Hypernode. So uh, Timon, uh, can you show us around? Yeah, so uh, we have um, created a Magento 2 uh, project. Um, we created this last year because uh, we started working on Hypernode Deploy, um, and we wanted a way to validate that everything was uh, working nicely. So um, that's why we came up with uh, a Magento 2 project. Um, and we actually de deploy this project as well. So um, we have this uh, simple data Magento 2 store, um, and it runs on uh, on a hypernode. Um, so yeah, um, everything is uh, running here. Um, and we can uh, deploy uh, this application with hypernode deploy. So. Um, we have a Git repository. We're uh, planning on publishing this as well because we want to share this as a uh, as an example for Magento developers on how to configure um, Hypernode Deploy and also Hypernode Brancher for a Magento 2 source. Um, so, uh, well, let's first um, take a look at how we use. Um, um, Hypernode Brancher in here because, um, well, uh, we need to wait a little bit because um, uh, when we create a Brancher instance, we need to wait a few minutes to uh, spin up the environment. So let's first uh, make a change uh, so we can demonstrate uh, how we uh, create a, a temporary environment uh, for this Magento 2 application where we um, deploy a change. So in here, I'm going to edit uh, the config.php. Um, we have a block module. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's the MageFan block module. Uh, we're going to disable that module. And we're going to create a pull request for that. So for the people watching us who may not be so familiar with Magento, uh, in Magento, there's all these modules that you can uh, install and en enable and disable. There is a config file, uh, config.php, that has these uh, values in them. Um, and Timon is now making a pull request where he's disabling one of these uh, modules. So this is the blog module, which uh, basically adds some blogging functionality to your uh, web shop. Uh, and as we just showed, so this web shop is, is running on a hypernode. It's like a, a website you can actually uh, go to and click around. And we're going to demonstrate that if we deploy, it's going to actually not have this uh, module enabled anymore. Uh, this showing that we did this actual deploy uh, using hypernode deploy. Yeah, exactly. So um, we have created the pull request for this. Uh, and um, now we need to wait on this for a little bit, but we can show some configurations in the in the meantime. So it's currently building the application. After it's done doing that, it will deploy uh, to a test environment. And a test environment will be uh, created on the fly uh, by using Brancher. Uh, we have shown that uh, previously as well in the um, when we, we were showcasing the Hypernode Docs project. Um, so yeah, this uh, will take a little while, um, and we'll get back to this pull request. Um, so yeah, we use Hypernode Deploy for this project. So um, yeah, let's first uh, take a look at the deploy uh, Hypernode Deploy configuration. So in this project, we have a deploy.php file. 
Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit to make it more readable. So what does it mean to use Hibernate Deploy? I guess that means like you put this file in your project mm -hmm. and that's the configuration for Hibernate Deploy. And then there is a command that you can run to deploy using Hibernate Deploy. So this file contains all your configurations for how you want to deploy, like all the steps you need to perform to, to deploy your shop, like building static assets, uh, things like that. That's defined in this file. Yeah, exactly. So we have um, uh, we have some settings for the, the server itself, like what kind of PHP version do we want on the environments, but also um, um, we have some um, base configuration, which uh, we also include in Hypernode Deploy, which is like a common set of tasks that you want to execute on uh, when, when you're deploying Magenta 2. So uh, they here, tweak these things, right? So this is like yeah. a like a template, and then based mm -hmm. on top of this, you can add or change things. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you can also choose to not use this uh, base configuration and add um, uh, the task in yourself. So um, this is just a, a nice starter template. Um, so. Yeah, um, we have a configuration uh, which is based on this Magenta 2 template configuration. Um, and first, we add a platform configuration. We can do uh, many other kinds of uh, platform configurations, like we could say, uh, well, we need this specific MySQL version, or we want to uh, have, a, um, have an extra Redis instance running or um, an extra varnish instance running. So you can do um, several things with that. Uh, currently, we only set a PHP version in this project. Um, so that's what uh, this is for. So uh, you can basically... In the root, it's like uh, on a Hypernode, you can do Hypernode system CTL uh, settings, PHP version, whatever. So you can set the PHP version of your Hypernode, uh, mm -hmm. but you can also do this using the API. So there is a PHP uh, library that implements the API. It's an API client, and then that has functionality to set these values for a Hypernode using the Hypernode's API key. And then Hypernode Deploy uses that library to talk to the API to do this. So when, when you add this in your configuration, that means that once the deploy starts running, it's going to talk to the API on behalf of your Hypernode to ensure these settings. So behind the scenes, what happens is that we start running Ansible, do all these things to make it so. Uh, but this is where that happens. And then it all, will also wait for that setting to be completed. So that means that uh, once you are in the next step of this deployment mechanism, there is a guarantee that it's already on that version. Yeah, maybe it's also nice to say that um, we're currently making the pull request, um, but these configurations are set per stage. And the stages, I, I think it's uh, at the bottom of this file, um, the stages are only applied at certain moments in the pipeline, right? So later on, Timon's probably going to talk about the, the pipeline itself, but we don't change the PHP version only until we trigger that stage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is um, uh, setting this um, configuration or this platform setting in uh, the, the deploy configuration is really nice because uh, sometimes when you are planning on a Magento upgrade, um, very often you need also need to take into account the fact that you need a different PHP version. So you could uh, bundle all, all those changes like on, the, on an application level, but also on a platform level. Um, and deploy it as one thing to your server. Yeah, so in theory, if you would want to test your shop with a different PHP version, all you would need to do is make a pull request that adds like the PHP version here to a different version. And then in your pull request, uh, it could start a GitHub action to make one of these branch nodes, which is a copy of your normal environment, but then with a different PHP version. And if you have an integration test suite or something, you could combine it like that, where it can then verify for you if the PHP version change is breaking something for you. So this, you can do this for PHP version, MySQL version, Varnish version. Like we have a whole bunch of settings you can configure like this. Um, but this is, I think, the, the most clear to explain. PHP version is, is that simple. Yeah. I also think that what is very nice about this is that if your production environment is sitting on a different PHP version, then if you create a branch here, uh, that's also in the older PHP version, and then you do the upgrade. So you can see the upgrade in, in progress instead of you boot a new environment and you have the new version. You actually see the transition between the two things. So yeah. maybe you can scroll down a little bit and show the mm -hmm. different stages that we have. 
Yeah. So um, yeah, we have um, we have uh, two stages, or actually three stages in here. So we have a Hypex um, um, server that we can deploy to, um, which we call the staging environment. Um, so here we have a domain name that we enter here. Here's the username that we use. That is the name of the stage. And this is actually the uh, host name of the server. Um, well, the same goes for the production stage, uh, which is, well, the name is production. And this is, well, um, the name that we get, give this uh, stage on, on, on the hypernode itself. Or, yeah, not the name of the stage. It's like the, the name of the application, rather. Yeah, so on and the hypernode, we get a directory called apps in your home directory. And within the apps directory, there's several application directories. Yeah. And the application directory will be called magento2.concomer.store. Yeah, exactly. So we we have a state. Uh, we have uh, three stages, and each each stage uh, gets um, a server assigned. So the same thing goes for the uh, test stage. Um, with the stages called test, we we give the uh, the application a name for this uh, stage. And in this case, we do something different. So here you see we set, well, we add a server here with this host name. Here we say we add a brancher server. And here we enter um, the actual uh, hypernode name uh, of which we are going to branch uh, instances of. So um, um, what Hypernode Deploy will do with this is uh, say, well, um, we're going to, for, for example, when you start deploying to the test stage, um, Hypernode Deploy will uh, look into this and say, well, um, we don't know the host name and it is a branch or server. Uh, and we do know the Hypernode name that we're going to branch off of. So it will uh, start talking to the Hypernode API. Uh, and say, well, I want a brancher instance based off uh, this hypernode. And it will create that with these labels uh, applied as well. So the, these are arbitrary labels. Uh, we, we keep it, uh, we set these labels for administ uh, administrative purposes. But um, yeah, it will add, it, it will create uh, a server on the fly. Then it will configure it uh, into deployer. And once that server is ready, it will continue deploying and executing all those deployed tasks. So, um, yeah, we have um, this part where we set the stages. Here we do some uh, extra configuration where we set, um, well, sorry for that. We can actually get rid of this, uh, of these parts, I think. Oh, no. Uh, these are actually files that you want to share between um between deployments um so we have these configured here as well but i think these are also configured in um the the template that we are using here um yeah these look like the some of the default values that we already provide yeah by the way these can be is it shared so oh shared files and folders yeah okay. sorry i yeah. thought it was the same thing yeah, so each, uh, you could see it as like uh, each deployment uh, has uh, references to these files uh, or these shared files and folders. They all link to the same files and folders. So for example, when you upload uh, images in your Magento backend, um, they, uh, the images will also exist on, a, on, on new deployments. So that's yeah. what, what that's for. So that's each... also because uh, like in Magento, you. You you wouldn't put your uh, images in the version control, right? So we're now deploying yeah. from the version control, and these are the mm -hmm. things that live outside all of this. So yeah. you have the stateful server on which state exists, and we're actually deploying on top of that with this new release. But like for example, the log directory, uh, you don't want to have like an empty log directory after your new deploy. You want to keep logging to the same place uh, as before. That's why these shared uh, folders and files make sense. But they're different based on the CMESH that you're deploying. So now we're talking about Magento, but there's also a template for shopware and for other things. And I think we have some same defaults in there where mm -hmm. these these are like pre-configured for you, for your application. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Maybe it's so, nice to show it in the terminal, like just uh, show the hierarchy of folders and how they interact with each other, just to yeah. get some kind of overview. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to wrap one thing up. Um, so uh, we, we have some extra things in here. Uh, we're going to talk about it later. 
Um, the, these uh, tasks that are configured here are used for the um, brancher deployments. We're uh, going to take a quick look at uh, what's going on here. So it finished the build step, and now it's um, um, it's waiting for a brancher instance to become available. So um, it was we're the halfway there. The build step and the deploy step. So in the build step, we run inside the, the CI, right? So this is not running yeah. on the server. This is like. Yeah. In our case, running on GitHub Actions, but it could be mm -hmm. GitLab or somewhere else, or even in your terminal, yeah. whatever, wherever you run this command. And then it builds an artifact. Yeah, exactly. So it will um, do all the things that you need to do for to prepare your Magento application to be running on production. Uh, so it will deploy all the CSS and JavaScript files, but also um, it will compile the uh, dependency injection and install all the composer um, packages and stuff. And then it will upload it uh, as a as an archive file um, to be used in the next uh, deploy step. And the deploy step will actually uh, take that uh, archive file, upload it to the server, and do all the tasks that um, uh, need to be done uh, to get that release um, in production. And the reason for that is to offload the compute from your production machine, right? Yeah. So then if, if you have a web shop and it's running in production, mm -hmm. you don't want to on that server be like, you know, doing heavy CPU, doing all these things you could do somewhere else. Yeah. So then in your CI system, it's going to start doing all this compute trying to uh, make this artifact. And then once the actual deploy is done on production, it only unpacks what it previously already did somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it has um, many be benefits. And yeah, one of the things is that you offload all the uh, extra compute that you need to be uh, to build your application. Uh, sometimes we also see like uh, the build step is actually heavier than the load that the production server actually gets. Uh, so you want to um, isolate that from uh, the production environment. But it, um, another upside is, is that you get re reproducible builds. So you, you're not reliant on any state going on on your production uh, environment. Uh, or for example, when your production environment uh, is, um, uh, is having a lot of memory in use, uh, you don't want your build task to be killed because um, uh, your serving is, uh, server is running out of memory. Um, but also one other thing uh, that's really nice that you can add um, um, dependencies in your Docker image um, that you need to build your application. This is very um, uh, we see this very uh, often uh, when people are also uh, including um, JavaScript frameworks in their ap uh, Magento application where they need to. Um, well, for example, they need to um, have some image optimization library uh, available and that's not uh, available on the production hypernode you 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 need to uh, um, sometimes you just need some uh, dependencies in order to build your application but you don't actually need those on production so it's also very easy to just add those dependencies to your docker image uh, uh, on which you're running your actions so you're so, talking about system dependencies, right? So this is yeah, yeah, the, system dependencies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you're in case on Hypernode, which is managed hosting, you don't have the freedom to like app get install whatever you want. Uh, it's, it's flexible <laughs> in many ways, but it's, it's not flexible like install system software uh, because that's part of the managed thing. But sometimes you do need to build something that you don't then you know you you, you use what it builds in production, but you don't actually need to build it in production. And now with this, you can get a lot of extra flexibility. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the uh, server. Um, where is it? Um, so here we are. Um, we have um, this hypernode and application is deployed to Magenta to uh, well to this uh, uh, name that we ga gave in the deployers.php. So we when we go into this directory. Uh, we'll see that we have uh, a releases directory. Um, we'll have a current directory, which um, links to number seven. And we have a shared directory. So that's what we talked about earlier. So here we have this uh, env.php file, but also we have um, this um, media directory with all the media files in there. So. Um, when we take a look at, uh, for example, um, the current uh, slash, yeah. So the current uh, directory, that's uh, basically the release that's currently in production. 
Um, so, so the, here we, sorry, yeah. So the pull request that you're making is updating mm -hmm. the Etsy env.php, but it's also in the shared directory. How does that work? Um, no, that's the config.php, this one. That's what the, uh, and this file is actually uh, not per environment that's um, that's um, being deployed per release. So it, it, it can differ per release. Great, thanks. So um, here you can see that, um, well, I can list the entire directory. So here you can see that these files are all, all just basic files, but the env.php, well, it has some um, relative uh, path and it uh, links to uh, the shared app uh, at cnf.php file. So the same goes for uh, when we take a look at the current slash pub directory, you can also see, well, the media directory is, li is linked to uh, the shared directory the sitemaps. So, so that's basically how that works. Who use uh, Deployer, this is probably all very familiar. Uh, so Hypernode Deploy, it's just uh, built on top of Deployer. So a lot of those uh, Deployer functionality is used here. So the um, directory, uh, sim linking, the shared mm -hmm. follow stuff. That's, that's basically how you would expect it with any normal deployer project. Yeah. Yeah, so um, um, on the uh, Nginx uh, part, we have um, this configuration and um, here um, we have uh, a different root set than we normally have. So normally um, we have uh, a root set to um, data slash data slash uh, web slash public, but this one actually links to the um, um, pub directory of the current release. So when we uh, do new releases, well, current will never change because it will always link to the newest release. So uh, when we do releases, uh, the, the web server will automatically um, start looking at the newest or well, the current release this way. So um, that's basically how uh, that works. The same link is flipped as soon as the release is complete. So once you start yeah. building, deploying the release, it can still be that the release fails, uh, and then you just have a new release directory in your releases directory. But mm -hmm. until it actually succeeds, it, it's gonna at that point flip the same link. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, flipping that same link is one of the uh, last things uh, deployer will do. Um, because it will, it um, needs to be sure that everything else is uh, going uh, smoothly. Um, so let's take a look at um, the deployment. Yeah, we can see that uh, the deployment has uh, successfully run. So that's very nice. So here you can see that it said, well, creating a branch or hypernode based on uh, the hypernode name. It also says, well, we uh, apply some labels here. Um, and then it requested this uh, branch or hypernode. And then it starts waiting. And after a little while, it um, has become available. The logging is a bit messed up here. We uh, have a fix in place for this, but uh, it's not rolled out yet. But yeah, here you can see an info message uh, which is saying branch or hypernode has become available. And after that, it will start running all the things like setting the PHP version, um, copying uh, the, the archive that I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, things like that. So when we go back to this pull request, uh, we can see that it has created a comment with review app is available at this link. Uh, we can also, it has also created a GitHub deployment. So we can also click on this link. Um, this is very unfortunate. <laughs> this uh, specific uh, uh, this uh, so how Brancher work is um, is that um, it is using uh, snapshots uh, of the um, source hypernode. So we installed uh, sample data um, on this hypernode today, but we haven't. Uh, uh, made a snapshot for this. So now we can actually see that it has actually uh, created um, a branch hype node. It has deployed the application, but um, we are missing the, the Luma data. So that's a bit unfortunate. Um, yeah, so you added the Luma data before we started, but the, the, now it made a branch node of the previous snapshot from when yeah. it didn't have the Luma data yet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah exactly. 
on Hypernode, you can create a snapshot yourself, right? So you can do Hypernode system CTL create snapshot. So maybe we can yeah. show the people how you could make a snapshot to say, this is yeah. a new shape snapshot of which my branch node would next be created. So snapshots are on Hypernode just backups. If you have a cloud plan, you can create a backup and that would create a cloud snapshot of your uh, cloud volume. And then uh, what branch would do is make a copy of that cloud snapshot into a new cloud volume to attach to this new node. Uh, yeah, so you do have to have a specific SLA to be able to create yeah. the snapshot yourself uh, from uh, using the normal Hypernode API. Um, so, but then you need to wait for the snapshot to complete before you can actually use it for your branch node. Otherwise, yeah. you're still going to use the previous one, which has last completed. Yeah. Um, and that's the problem that we're now encountering because we still have the, the previous snapshot without the sample data. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's a bit unfortunate because uh, it looks a bit more complete when we have uh, all this sample data. But we can uh, take a look at, uh, at at this hypernode. So um, we log in. We're going to log into this hypernode um, because it's still at the at the block module, right? Just without yeah, the sample data. Yeah. So we disable the mage fan block module. So we are actually missing this uh, block uh, menu entry here on the uh, on the on the menu bar. So uh, we can actually see that it's working. Um, so let's log into this hypernode. And here we can see that we have um, this uh, app called test directory. Um, you can see that it has one release, and that's what current is currently pointing to. Um, and when we take a look at the uh, config.php file, we can actually see that this is uh, disabled now. So that's uh, that's basically how we show uh, that it's working. But we can also, um, well, we can basically say, well, uh, this is all working nicely. Um, and now we're going to uh, merge this uh, pull request. So now we get uh, gets merged and um, an action will start running now to deploy the application to uh, production. So you it actually know the logic of um, how it decides to deploy to production now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, we're going to take a look at that. So we have um, something uh, called GitHub uh, Actions workflows, uh, which does all this uh, uh, magic actually. So uh, at first we uh, uh, to um, took a look at the uh, test deployment. So let's open that file. So here you can also see um, the build step that we previously mentioned and the deploy test step. So build is um, uh, a workflow that we reuse for the staging step, for the production step, and for the test step. So it's all the same. So that's why we uh, include this and not type it out for every um, uh, stage. So um, it is referring to this file. And here you can see that it checks out the, um, the repository. It set a, uh, sets up a composer cache. So when you uh, run multiple um, builds steps after each other, it, it, it can make use of uh, composer caching. So it doesn't need to fetch all those dependencies from the internet. Um, we set up an SSH agent, and so the SSH agent is important because, uh, well, you want to be able to deploy to um, your hypernode, but also uh, we very often see that people need uh, to have SSH access to, for example, uh, have access to uh, private um, Composer packages that are uh, accessible with uh, Git, so you need to, to have uh, SSH access. These are like uh, uh, project secrets, right? So if I would go yeah. to settings, then I could like see this uh, key there, and then you mm -hmm. would paste this in for your uh, Hypernode your key. Uh, but also, yeah. for example, the Hypernode API token, right? Because at this yeah. point, uh, when you're making branch nodes, you need mm -hmm. to have a uh, API token, and you can get that from your Hypernode, uh, mm -hmm. and then you would put this in your CI. Yeah. Yeah, so here we also configure this action with, well, we have a private key and this is the value of that. So it refers to secrets.ssh private key. We can show that. We're not going to show the value, but uh, here we have some secrets and um, here you see the SSH private key and also the Hypernode API token. So both these um, variables are 
injected for each workflow. Yeah, and you could get the Hypernode API token from the Hypernode itself. In the shell, it's at the Hypernode Hypernode API token. So in case you yeah. don't know, that's why you can find the key. Yeah, uh, so it's uh, right here. So, well, I'm not going to show it, by the way. <laughs> You don't have to show the actual <laughs> good idea. <laughs> the hypernode but hypernode I can list it. Talking. So uh, let's uh, let's do it uh, this way. So here you can see uh, uh, the location of where the token is. So it's just a string in there. You can read this file. <clears throat> um, so yeah, um, it sets up the SSH agent. Then it uh, runs hypernode deploy build. Um, we add some uh, for for positive flags. So uh, these are basically to be able to see uh, very um, well, uh, very precise logging um, when the build uh, job is running. So that's we find it very useful to see all this uh, logging uh, to see what exactly Hypernode build is uh, currently doing. But you can also leave these flags out, and then you will have less output. So I think what the nice thing about GitHub is that we used to use Jenkins a lot. And uh, now on GitHub, you can group this output actually together in these uh, different steps. Mm -hmm. So uh, normally it would be like scrolling, finding your error, error, oh, it's a warning, it's not actually the error. Uh, but in this case, it actually has these steps where you can actually see it, it passed this step, it's at the next step, and it folds all this uh, output in, in this foldable thing. So you don't have to worry about a previous step of which you know it succeeded. And then it's just very more comprehensible to understand these logs. Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, what uh, Rick is uh, referring to. Um, right here, you have um, these groups that you can uh, uh, open and close. Well, it's not working out very nicely in this example, but yeah, you can uh, close these all. Uh, you can close these and open them and it's very nice to look uh, into this uh, deployment uh, report. Yeah, and if, if you would add an extra step in the uh, deploy.php, then this would be a step here in an extra foldable thing. So if you have yeah. extra commands to, to kick off uh, during your deploy or at a different stage, <coughs> uh, you can group that output really, really neatly here. Yeah. Um, so um, here it runs Hypernode deploy. We looked into that um, already. And after that, it will, um, well, it will have an, an archive file and it will uh, upload it as an, a GitHub Actions uh, artifact. Uh, so we can um, reuse that file in, in the next deploy step. So this file gets, uh, gets included by the deploy test um, workflow. So this is the one that it first runs. And it also, deploy test also says, well, I, I depend on the build step. So it will run this one first and then this one will run. So here we, um, by the way, um, this is one thing that I forgot in the build uh, step. We have a container image. So this is a Docker container image that we specify. So we host this at Quay, which is a public uh, image repository. And we specify it um, with uh, a version. So hypernode deploy, that's the image that we have. This is the version that we use. So we will use major version three uh, with uh, PHP 8.1 there uh, installed there and Node.js 18. But you can also differ in the in this stuff. So you can say PHP 7 like the uh, 7.4 with Node.js 16 or whatever. So we have uh, a whole matrix of all those versions. So while we keep developing Hypernode Deploy, we're going to have newer versions of this, and you may want to pin a specific version. Uh, but you could also, I guess, use the latest version, right? So it, it depends on your use case. Mm -hmm. If you're like, I just want to use the, the latest version with all the latest bug fixes, you could uh, uh, upgrade your version uh, because we add new functionality uh, all the time. Uh, yeah. But if you're like in a production environment and you're deploying, you may want to think about uh, having a methodic way of updating these versions and then pin it so you don't have any surprises uh, when a new version comes out. Yeah. So, um, for example, you can also say, well, we think that um, this specific version is uh, working very nicely for us. So, let's select one. So, yeah, uh, you can also say, um, we would like to use this very specific version. So, 3.4.1 with this with these specifications so you can also specify the version if you want to uh, stay on a specific version 
Um, yeah. So if you're interested in what is actually in this container, uh, the repository that builds this container is, the container is open source. Yeah. Uh, so you could look at exactly what it's building, but it's, it's just a, uh, yeah, a container that contains the software for Hypernet Deploy, uh, which you then run to perform this deploy. In this mm -hmm. case, we're running it in uh, the GitHub Actions, but you could also just run this on your computer. So if you're like the type of person who wants to just uh, run deploy, uh, then you could do it from your computer with this image as well. Yeah, so um, after it has uh, reached the, um, well, uh, when it reaches the deploy test step, um, it will um, use this container once again, and then it will run some other steps. Um, so it checks out the repository again, um, and then it downloads the build artifact that we just uploaded. Uh, it sets up the SSH agent again. So this all feels like kind of boilerplate code, um, and we want to make a, um, reusable workflow uh, on our Hypernode GitHub account for people who are using uh, GitHub Actions to deploy their applications. But um, yeah, this is basically what we need to uh, deploy this uh, deploy uh, with Hypernode Deploy on GitHub Actions. So um, eventually, we uh, run the Hypernode Deploy deploy uh, command. And it's here, it specifies the stage. So we're going to deploy the test stage which is a brancher um, kind of stage. And we also give this flag reuse brancher. So this flag is uh, kind of um, nice to have when you have a pull request and you start adding uh, commits into that pull request and you don't want to um, create a new uh, brancher instance for each commit that you add. So th with this flag enabled, it will uh, take a look at, uh, well, um, we are uh, creating these brancher instances with these labels. Let's first take a look if we can find, if we already have a brancher instance with these labels. And if it does, it will reuse that one. So if you don't have a, a feature branch, any subsequent commit to that branch would deploy on the already existing server, yeah. which would make it a bit, a bit faster. So it's just going to yeah. do a new deploy, new uh, release directory, make mm -hmm. that same link once it's done. Yeah. Uh, and then in this case, it also selects you that link where you can just click on the, the new deploy thing. So that's really lowers the threshold for people to do acceptance, like clicking around on a website. If people who are maybe a bit less technical want to make like a textual change to your site and see how it looks like, this could be a really uh, easy way to give them a um, like an amount of testing environments to, to mess around with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can also automatically cancel after you've uh, tested, right? So yeah. if your uh, integration test ran, you, uh, you've created your brancher, you've deployed to it. Let's say you want to use it for running tests. There's also a way of cleaning it up, right? Yeah, yeah we can take a look in the, into that as well. But you can also, for example, do it all in one workflow where you could say, well, we do deploy to a test environment. We run a um, Cypress test suite. And after we're done, we're going to clean that uh, brancher instance up. So um, it's kind of, you can, play around it with it like how you want it uh, to work. Um, so, so this is kind of how, how we uh, have configured it for this repository, but it's not um, definitely not the only way. Yeah, so there's a, another way we do it as well for our own internal projects is uh, we just say, well, these branch nodes live for four hours. So we have, for example, a, a very simple implementa implementation. There's a cron that runs on the on the normal hypernode, and it's going to list all these branch nodes that are older than four hours, and then just start deleting those if they're older than four hours. So whenever we make uh, pull requests for our own internal projects, it's going to make it a whole new environment for every commit. And then after four hours, that's just deleted automatically. So you can then uh, like just have an environment to click around and mess around with. Everything's disposable that way. Uh, but yeah, you, like Timon said, you could you could delete it once you merge to master. You could uh, delete it once your integration test pass. Um, it, it really depends on what you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we are in this uh, Hypernode deploy, deploy test uh, command. Uh, we also give the, uh, an environment uh, variable, which is called Hypernode API token, which is the secret that we mentioned earlier, as, because it needs this uh, token to be able to communicate with the Hypernode API. Um, after it's done, so uh, at this point, it has deployed the application to um, the Ranger instance. Um, here it's... Um, 
uh, will uh, read the deployment report of JSON. So uh, this uh, this command will um, generate a file called deployment report of JSON, and then there it will say, well, I deployed to these host names, these brancher instances were created and stuff. So um, we read this uh, file to um, figure out what the host name was of the uh, brancher instance, and based on that we create a, a URL that we report back to, um, well, we report this back here. So we can say, well, uh, hey, GitHub, we have created a test environment and this is the URL. And we also use this exact variable um, to place that comment that we saw earlier, which says review app is available at, well, the URL. So that's basically how this works. Um, yeah, Alex um, also mentions that we have some cleanup mechanism. So we have a file called cleanup test.yaml. Um, here, um, these files run on uh, when a pull request is closed. So when you merge a pull request or when you close it, it will run this uh, job. So uh, what it does, well, it uses the same container again. It checks out the uh, repository. Then it uh, runs hypernode deploy cleanup test. So test is the stage again that we uh, specify, and uh, we also uh, specify this hypernode API token. So what this will do is uh, it will uh, take a look at uh, the labels that um, hypernode deploy would use for um, creating a brancher instance, but uh, this time it will uh, check with the API well, give me all the branch instances with these labels applied, and then it will remove those uh, instances. So, so about these labels, so those are basically key value uh, paths that you can just put an arbitrary amount on on your branch app. So yeah. uh, there's this label that we're now looking for that that's like a identifier for it belongs to this uh, feature branch, but you could also just add like key value pairs of information. So maybe you just want to label these branch nodes with to find it later, oh, this one I use for that, this one I use for this, so maybe mm -hmm. you want to add a description or something. Uh, yeah. Those are basically what the labels could be used for. Yeah, so these labels, wow, what's going on there? Uh, these labels, um, you can see them here. So it applies two labels. The first label is stage is test, so this will be the same for every test deployment that we do. Then we have another label, which is called CI underscore ref. So it's a reference to this um, CI uh, continuous integrations um, uh, job that's running. And um, so it, it's, this basically uh, will be um, the branch name. So we fetch this, um, we set this value uh, to the GitHub head ref. So in the case of a pull request, this will refer to the branch name of the pull request. Um, if it can't find that, it will default to the value none. So uh, you can see in this case, um, let's take a look at the pull request that we just merged. So if you take a look at the actions that run uh, right here. So we have this uh, pull request. Well, where is this pull request? Um, and the, the branch name was disable MageFan block. So you will also see that same branch name when we deploy to the brancher instance. So it says creating a, a, a brancher uh, hypernode based on this hypernode name. And then it says labels to be applied. Stage is test and CI underscore ref is disable MageFan block. So this is the, the branch name. So, um, we merged that pull request, and then it actually uh, already ran the cleanup test environments job. And we're going to take a look at the output of this job. So here it says cleaning up brancher instances based on hypernode agent test route with labels stages test ci underscore ref is the disabled magefan block. And then it's uh, also found a brancher instance and it stopped that uh, brancher instance and then it was done. So yeah. that's how we um, um, remove 
or clean up the the branch instances in this so we project. also use uh, these, these branch nodes for some remote development sometimes and uh, at this step we actually throw away the actual server right so we copy uh, the production environment to like a branch node which is temporary and then once it's done it's cleaned up like this so i just wanted to make it clear to the people watching that you don't want to be putting things on here that actually are like uh, that matter right because you want to be maybe doing some remote, remote development but then you want to commit what's on there because it will be deleted if you delete it, right? So uh, mm -hmm. these things you could use, uh, you could you could leave them to exist for quite a while, but really intended to be ephemeral, as we call it, like temporary, fleeting in nature. Uh, you want to be able to destroy them easily. So you could also say, so what if um, you know we don't want to spend all our money on all these dev environments all the time? In this case, you could say during the day I have all these servers running that I don't have running during the night because during the day we're doing development, we have these pull requests, we're working on it, and then at night you just delete all of them, and in the morning you create them all back. But it only works if they're like stateless. So what is the point on there? You want to make sure that there's nothing on there of value. And then if you make a change, you want to commit, you make sure you commit it, you push it to a CI, but like don't don't put uh, data on there that you don't want to, you know, get rid of if you delete the node, because of course it's then actually gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess so. your shell also kind of crashed at this point, right? Because we did del deleted it. Yeah, so the node is gone. That's yeah, correct. So, so, so yeah. if they <laughs> deleted the whole server, you yeah. cannot log in anymore. Your, your shell is dead. As yeah, expected. exactly. Yeah. But you can still see it if you use the uh, Hypernode system CTL and then Brancher, right? You can yeah. see that it's terminated, and then mm -hmm. uh, you see the amount of minutes spent on it. Can you run the list command Did you just show on the, on the normal Hypernode? Yeah. So um, well, I'll open, uh, I can close this one. Uh, Hypernode um, system CTL Brancher um, list. You can also just type I have no branch or there's an alias for that. Yeah. Um, here it shows um, I think one was what has again. been created. Um, Your uh, shell is a bit frozen for me, but I think there's a, like a, a, a argument you can pass for any terminated nodes as well. Oh, yeah. Show, show there terminated. it is. Show terminated. So this is going to be a big list, I think. Yeah, because we use this a lot. So, so uh, look at this. These are all uh, <laughs> sacrifice to the cause, let's say. So these are uh, hypernodes that we made and destroyed mm -hmm. for all these changes we've been making on our projects. So this one was uh, EPH6J3. So <laughs> where is it? Yeah. Just grab. <laughs> I think you have to uh, look very hard. Uh, It's all the way around, right? So uh, five, yeah. Five percent. Six J three. It should be there. Well, it's a good showcase. <laughs> we can. Uh, Maybe you have too many. Maybe it's. Uh, yeah. That's why perhaps working. I have too many, and we're actually paging here. Oh um, yeah, it's paginated. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, might be the case. Yeah, yeah. That uh, looks like a bug. <laughs> um but yeah so, this this one is terminated and it is not available anymore so when i click this link again um it will say the site can't be reached but in the meantime we have also uh, ran a um, deployment to production so that happened 40 minutes ago so when we refresh this page the block menu item will disappear there you go wow. so yeah yeah, very cool. Um, so I think this is great because uh, we're going to make this uh, repository public and people will have a working example of how to set this all up. Uh, people have been using Brancher a lot, uh, but I think it's it's good for people to have a working example of how to do this with Magento exactly on GitHub, just with these workflows that you could copy paste to your own project. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully people will be able to use this in the same way we are. Uh, and uh, a bit lower the threshold. We have documentation for all of this, of course. There's examples for GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, pipelines, everything. Uh, but just having like actual code to look at uh, could maybe maybe really help somebody out to figure out how it's uh, supposed to work. Yeah, yeah. So we also uh, will be adding things in here as well. We're also looking into edit a, adding a, Git a GitLab CI configuration in here um, to 
show how we would do the same thing, but then for GitLab uh, CI and perhaps also in the future for Bitbucket pipelines. Um, and we're also working on creating the right documentation for uh, all these configurations. So um, yeah, um, we're looking for, forward to uh, pub publishing that. And I guess this is uh, all for this uh, episode. And then uh, we'll see you guys uh, next time. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So. thanks. Yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks for watching. For watching. Okay. Bye.